kabataan, I hope everybody is safe and sound. But before I begin, allow me to express my thanks and gratitude to the organizers of this Calamba City Integrated Science Schools Brigada Escuela webinar series on leadership training as we celebrate the International Youth Week. Thank you for having me as one of your keynote speakers. Actually, I don't know what made you choose me, but one thing is for sure, I'm here in front of your screen for a reason. And let that reason be heard. What are we waiting for? Let's get the ball rolling. I am Teacher Rex, often addressed as Sir Bibal, and I am here to expound on the topic, being a leader of my own life. And the letter of invitation specifically asks me, Sir Bibal, how do you strike a balance between and among the numerous and diverse engagements you have right now? Actually, my perfect answer would be, it's because boredom isn't in my vocabulary. You know guys, when you feel bored, it has nothing to do with the world. It has nothing to do with anyone. It's all about you and your mindset. We cannot blame anybody or anything. In the time of pandemic, though this may be filled of anxiety and fear because of the threat of COVID-19, a lot of us post on social media platforms, boredom strikes. COVID-19 won't kill me, boredom will. As a matter of fact, this time of quarantine can be a great avenue for us to make the most out of our time. And I am here to help you on how are you going to make the most out of time or let me share you some of the quarantivities I have done during this quarantine period and how I manage all of these things done. Here are some of the quarantivities that you may take a look into. Taking enough rest, reading books, streaming on Netflix, writing poems and stories, cleaning your rooms, your closet, your wardrobe cabinets, and even your social media accounts. Creating content, starting up a micro business, name it, I don't think boredom will have a room during this quarantine period. As a youth who has almost all the energy and vigor of the world, we have to optimize our time. And when we say optimize, it means maximizing the time or making the most out of our time. Because when are we going to exercise? When are we going to learn digital arts and designs? When are we putting up? our own business when we are already old and frail guys yolo you only live once carpe diem or seize the day life's too short to focus on non-essentials boredom and bitterness shape up before it's too late and remember don't just seize the day seize the moment so who am i and what am i doing Number one, I am a young professional. After graduating from Philippine Normal University, Manila, in 2014, I started teaching in Paref Northfield School for Boys. And when I passed the LET 2014, I tried my luck to be employed in DepEd Calamba City. And fortunately, this is my fifth year in the service. And that's during daytime. During nighttime, I worked as a college instructor in a particular city college where I teach purposive communication, teaching and assessing literature, um, also communication sa akademikong Filipino, and pagtuturo ng Filipino sa elementarya. And I am also a module writer, language editor, and learner's materials validator. In the division of Calamba City, I also develop questionnaires for quarterly examinations. I also um, wrote a module for school-to-school -school partnership in grammar and also in reading. And I have also validated some of the self-learning materials in DepEd Calamba City. And last May to June, as a response of DepEd Calabarzon, in the new normal mode of the school year 2020-2021, I, I was also tasked to validate or, or, or review the language part of the self-learning modules to be um, 
distributed in the whole Calabarzon. I am a review lecturer. There are several uh, private institutions which um, ask me to be a speaker during their uh, review sessions. I am also an events host. So I host DepEd programs in schools, in the division, and also host wedding events, okay? Wedding, birthdays, and different occasions. I am an amateur graphic artist. I have put up Bibalistic Arts and Crafts as one of my businesses where I do some of layouts, logo, wedding invitations, birthday invitations, tarpaulins, program and invitations, and a lot more. That's the Bibalistic Arts and Crafts. I am also a neophyte or a new entrepreneur. I am just beginning because I have put up the survival your virtual mark where I sell a lot of things, international products and also local products. I am an active netizen. I create contents in WordPress. I write blogs, a screen with Mr. Bibal. Number two, I also um, develop contents in YouTube in my T-Rex channel and I have been writing my criticisms, my opinions, and some of my creative juices in social media for my friends or my, my, my virtual friends to read. And of course, I am a citizen. And not to mention that I am a young family man. I am a husband and the father of a one-year-old baby, Symphony. So, <laughs> okay, so enumerating this, <laughs> I, oh my god, I am, um, I'm speechless, okay? I don't know, until I made this presentation, until the Calsay Brigada Escuela asked me to, to talk about this, I never realized that I have been doing a lot, okay? I've been doing a lot, and and right now, at this very moment, I don't know. I don't know. I'm wondering, paano ko nakakaya to? So, let's try to know how and why am I doing However, ladies and gentlemen, reality check would reveal that there were many times that I have been longing for a possibility that there will be an extra 60 minutes per day or an extra day in between Sunday and Monday. Because I always find it so difficult to squeeze everything I need and I want to do in a single day. There are moments that I really extended my days through the night sacrificing my own rest and the comfort of my bed. And a lot of people have asked me, Kailangan mo ba talagang gawin yan? Kailangan ba talagang pahirapan ang sarili? Matindi ba talaga ang iyong pangangailangan? Can you just say no to other requests and favors? Lahat pa talaga ng opportunities, susuungin mo. I answered them by just shrugging my shoulders and thinking of my purpose and all the fruits of my labor. Hanggat kaya ko naman gagawin ko, I always want to improve my craft. I want to go beyond. I want to challenge myself. I want to optimize my short stay here. And to top it all, I want to give my family the best future. Therefore, it all boils down to my dreams and my passion. My newest venture aside from the fact that I have been preparing myself as a teacher in the new normal was my first stint as a businessman or as a salesman. I started selling Walis Tambo of Mindoro, which a lot of people patronize it primarily because one of its features and quality Second, because a lot of people find my marketing strategies effective and convincing. Then eventually, I sold our very own harvest, papayas, from our farm located in Mindoro, followed by the office and school supplies, and eventually, I started introducing Dubai and Hong Kong Pasabay, or Hong Kong and Dubai products, paving the way for survival, the virtual mart. 
my online store sold out after sold out it has been so fulfilling especially when you go home with client satisfaction and overwhelming feedbacks unfortunately it's not always like that it won't be a business without flaps i experienced a lot of rejections and order cancellations countless times i lost time bonding with my family i lost my time in pursuing my diet and exercise i lost focus I even felt guilt asking myself, why am I doing this? Is it worth every drop of sweat? Is it worth every count of sleepless nights? There are days I felt so discouraged and weak. I was thinking of stopping the business. But I am being reminded that you never decide when you're too emotional. Never decide when you're too sad nor too happy. Oftentimes, you'll regret it in the end. This is still far from a successful business venture. This is just the beginning. I don't know what's going to happen next. But I'm sharing you this to get a message across. Wake up. Step out of your comfort zone. See what else life can offer. Have courage and turn the rocks within your reach. Start small. Life shouldn't be always easy. After all, what doesn't kill you? makes you stronger moreover during tough times your real friends and your family arise they really stand out and you will realize that they are here they are there to support you no matter what okay moving forward to the very meat of this talk I want to give you six ways on how are you going to optimize your youth. How are you going to maximize your time? Number one, you diagnose yourself. It doesn't mean that you will go to a hospital or to a diagnostic center and you'll have yourself checked and tested. No, it means that you diagnose your strengths and weaknesses. You know yourself more. But it has been an overused strategy. In classes, in seminars, that we identify our strengths and weaknesses. But when you start to get older and things are getting more complicated, you will realize that knowing oneself is the greatest tool to survive. If you know your strengths, you can choose your own battle. You can be at a great advantage. You may start doing a business related to your strength. Meanwhile, when you know your weakness, you know where to begin. It doesn't mean that you'll evade the circumstances that require skills that you are not comfortable with. It should not go that way. Knowing one's weakness means, first, you accept that you cannot have it all. There will always be people who are greater in every craft. Acceptance is a nice gesture that you respect or you love yourself no matter how weak you are. Second, Weakness means an opportunity to grow. Acceptance doesn't mean you'll just believe you cannot. It also means that during your vacant times, you may exert effort to revolutionize your weakness, to lessen them, if not, to eradicate them. And the greatest thing is make it as an additional strength. Third, knowing your weakness is a protection. Embrace those with strengths that frustrate but expand you. Meron na tayong kinaiinggitan ng mga tao, no? Ang galing mo namang kumanta, ang galing mo namang sumayaw, ang galing mo namang mag-English, ang galing mo namang magsulat, ang galing mo naman sa mga ganyang bagay. But it's actually your protection because when you get closer to these people, sometimes mapifeel mo madidiscourage ka kasi ang gagaling nila mapararamdaman mo you are so inferior but they expand and you eventually because you, you idolize them you want to at least okay learn something that would make you move an inch closer to their capabilities okay fourth knowing your weakness opens your heart to receive help kapag mahina ka hindi naman laging kailangan ikaw ang malakas di ba so, ibig sabihin nun, nagkakaroon ng opportunity ang sabili mo na humingi ng tulong. No man is an island. Darating at darating ang oras na kailangan natin ng ibang tao in order to fill our emptiness, in order to fill the gap. Now, you receive 
Receiving help expands your life and leadership. When you are a leader, it doesn't mean that you will do it all. Okay? When you are a boss, it doesn't mean that you're going to or to the leader of your task or your, your groups, your thesis. It doesn't mean that you will make everything. Because it is an avenue for you to open your doors to receive help. To appreciate the skills and the help of other people. Okay? Fifth. Knowing your weakness helps you honor the strength of others. Your weakness lets others know that they matter. So, sabi ko nga kanina, hindi kailangang araw-araw ikaw ang pinakamahusay. Hindi laging ikaw ang panalo. Hindi araw-araw ikaw ang masaya, ikaw ang malakas. Sapagkat maraming mga pagkakataon na dapat din namang maramdaman ng iba that they matter. At sa mga pagkakataong ito, natutulungan tayo on how to appreciate the strengths of other people. We honor and we respect their capacity. And lastly, some weakness enhance strengths. Because you know it, that it's your weakness, sometimes we, we transform the weakness into strength, which may be an additional asset to our life. After knowing yourself and diagnosing yourself and strengths and weaknesses, the second tip that I'd like to give you is never judge yourself. Actually, there were many times that other people believe in me more than I believe myself and that just doesn't work. We should not be too harsh on ourselves. We have to give ourselves a chance to prove our very own capacity. Quit beating ourselves up. And realize that sometimes things just don't work out for no particular reason. Sometimes we mess up and that's okay. It doesn't make you not good enough or not smart enough. And it doesn't always mean that you aren't giving it your best. Ladies and gentlemen, it's okay not to be okay. Bring in more grace, more positivity into the relationship you have with yourself. Allow yourself to shine, and eventually, you'll allow others to shine too. Third, begin with the end in mind. Dream, that's it. As simple as that. Remember the moment that you open a fridge, and you were staring at it in a minute or two, and you come up to your senses, and you ask yourself, Why am I here? What am I supposed to get? See that? Doing things without a goal seems you are wandering to a great unknown. Therefore, it is very, very crucial to establish a goal no matter how shallow, no matter how lofty it is. According to Dr. Stephen R. Covey, the author of, high, of Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, your most important work is always ahead of you, never behind you. So, what do you want to be when you grow up? That question may be a little bit cliche, but think about it for a moment. Are you right now who you want to be? What you dream you'd be? Doing what you always wanted to do? Be honest, sometimes people find themselves achieving victories that are empty. Successes that have come at the expense of the things which are far more valuable to them. If your ladder is not leaning against the right wall, then, every step you take gets you to the wrong place faster. The physical creation follows the mental, just as building follows a blueprint. So you have to begin with the end in mind. You have to have a goal in order for you to define your journey. Fourth, drop worries, take risks. Read about successful people. In no arena of human ambition can you win or grow without taking a risk. The psychologist Abraham Maslow believed that self-actualizing types, those who tend to fulfill their potential, are those who make the growth choice over the fear choice routinely. So you have to choose the growth choice over the fear choice. Number two, courage and risk are absolutely relative. These aren't comparison games. 
What's courageous to one person may be faint-hearted to another. Risk is whatever scares you. Fifth and second to the last tip is learn from past and mistakes. How? The first thing that you're going to do is to acknowledge your errors. You cannot learn from your errors if you don't know that it's your mistake or that it's your error. Number two, you ask yourself these tough questions such as what went wrong? What could I do better next time? And what did I learn from this? And the last thing that you're going to do is to move forward with your newfound wisdom. The sixth that I'm going to give you is another habit I have lifted from seven habits of highly effective people. It is think win-win. When one side benefits more than the other, that's a win-lose situation. To the winner, it might look like success for a while, but in the long run, it breeds resentment and distrust. According to Dr. Stephen Covey, in the long run, if it isn't a win for both of us, we both lose. That's why win-win is the only real alternative in interdependent realities. Work effectively with others to achieve optimal results. Think win-win isn't about being nice, nor is it a quick fix technique. It is a character-based code for human interaction and collaboration. Most of us learn to base our self-worth on comparisons and competitions. That's the reality. We think about succeeding in terms of someone else failing. That is, if I win, you lose. If you win, I lose. Life becomes a zero-sum game. There is only so much pie to go around. And if you get a big piece, there is less for me. It's not fair. And I'm going to make sure you don't get any more. We all play the game, but how much fun is it really? Win-win sees life as a cooperative arena, not a competitive one. Win-win is a frame of mind and heart that constantly seeks mutual benefit in all human interactions. Win-win means agreements or solutions that are mutually beneficial and satisfying. We both get to eat the pie and it tastes pretty good. A person or organization that approaches conflicts with a win-win attitude possesses three vital character traits. Integrity, maturity, and abundance mentality. So, ladies and gentlemen, by and large, we have to be the victors of our time. People have to invest on youth. The world should trust youth. That's the next is now. We can't afford to be stagnant. We have to be productive. The clock may stop, but time will not. When we practice the salient points I have provided, who knows, maybe it won't just be yourself and family that will be benefited. Creating a difference or impact in the world is always a possibility. Seize the day, everybody. Every second counts. Thank you and good day. This is once again Teacher Rex 